That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Bird Box Barcelona, the fourth film directed by David and Alex Pastor, which Netflix is releasing July 14th, 2023. Do we know David and Alex's other films? We do. You do too. Although you, I know you don't remember it, but uh, their debut was 2009's Carriers. Uh, which starred Chris Pine and Christopher Maloney, and that's about a group of people that have survived uh, virus plague uh, and are turning on each other. And then 2013's The Last Days was about a group of people in Barcelona who survive a uh, virus-like plague and have to find uh, somebody's girlfriend. And then 2020's uh, The Occupant also starred the lead of this film, Mario Casas. I think it's worth noting... I. I feel like you also watched a movie they scripted called Out of the Dark, starring Scott Speedman and Julia Stiles, where they move to Colombia and find that they've uh, bought a haunted house, which I also remember not liking. I don't recall any of that. I'm sorry, David and Alex. I hated this movie. <laughs> I hated it. <laughs> I did not like this film either. It felt like an unnecessary plundering of an already not very good film, because of course this is ex Expanding upon the universe brought about in 2018's Bird Box, starring Sandra Bullock, which is of course adapted from the novel by Josh Mallerman, uh, Damn You, Susanna Beer. The story, after an entity of mysterious origin annihilates the world's population, causing those who observe it to take their lives, Sebastian and his daughter begin their own great adventure of survival in Barcelona. Great adventure? It's oh, yeah. <laughs> So, like you mentioned, this is basically like set at the same time as the 2018 film, except now we're in Spain and we see that this mysterious entity has traveled to Europe. So, we meet Sebastian and his daughter and they're roaming the streets in this apocalyptic land and they are, I guess, scouring for safety and food when they come across a group of people. And of course, everyone's blindfolded because they can't see anything. You know, if they see something, they'll die. And we know something's wrong immediately because when the people are questioning Sebastian and they agree to let him come with them, they ask him, are you alone? And he says, yes. So we see him go to this group's safe house and spend the night they invite, without his daughter. And they invite him there because he says he knows where there's a generator. So this film is basically a carbon copy of the 2018 film, except now we find out that there are people who can see the entity and not kill themselves and those people are called seers seers so is the terminology me. we've come up with however those people i'm so confused we need to talk about it but because i don't know we're made to think that maybe there's a genetic defect that allows them to um survive this exposure mm -hmm. but then there's also this priest running around convincing people that they need to like i guess Grab souls for Christ? I don't know. Yes, the, the seers basically become devil's emissaries. There is a hypothesis posed at the end of the film that suggests that there could be a medical cure, kind of like the end of Wreck. To, or is that Wreck 2? Uh, 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 that has a very similar arc that we're going for there. And then, of course, the priest, Padre Esteban, is played by Leonardo Spiraglia, who is in quite a few Spanish-language films, including El Motivar's Pain and Glory. He's in Red Lights as well. But the narrative is repetitive because we see Sebastian basically convincing people to expose themselves to the entity so they will kill themselves and their souls will rise to the sky. But... Towards the halfway point of the film, he meets a group of people, and he seems to become attached to this woman played by... Uh, Georgina Campbell, Claire, who is from Barbarian. Barbarian, and this little girl. A German girl named uh, Sophie. And maybe he has a fondness for her because he's lost his own daughter, but because he sort of develops a concern and care for them, he's able to suppress the voices in his head telling him, to like kill people basically mm -hmm. so he does agree to help these two and so i guess the main point of the story is that they want to get to just like the first movie they're trying to get to like a safe space where people have figured out how to survive this castle somewhere mm -hmm. in the sky that they need to take a sky, sky tram and I, I was really hoping there would be somebody shooting at them like in the film nighthawks so he is successful in helping the lady and the girl get to this castle but in order to allow them to do so, he has to stop the priest and his gang. And in that melee, they both get killed, the priest and the Sebastian. And then it's 
at the very end that we find out that there may be a medical cure, but it seems to be ineffective, which we can talk about. Um, oh, I don't know where to begin. I didn't like how the movie looked. It is at minimum 30 minutes too long. Mm -hmm. The story is, it just feels like they took a, like a, a movie, a story that was not that good to begin with. And because it was successful, made like a version in Spanish. I don't know. Uh, yeah, basically, especially because the the this kind of metaphor about everyone losing their eyesight has already been done much better, at least in novel form, by Saramago with Blindness, which had a very so-so film adaptation in two thousand eight by uh, Fernando Meireles. Me but mm. it's too ambiguous. Like the entity, we never learn what it is. It it just. There, there. We don't really quite fashion any parameters because now there's an oral component because they can hear the entity or some version of something from their past, some past trauma that yeah. tries to take, get them to take the blindfolds off. But they're going inside. They're in these bunkers. But then it's in moving about in the air. So I guess I just don't understand where. The rules aren't clear because when these people go outside, they have to block their vision. Mm -hmm. But then immediately when they go into a structure, they don't. But then like the first group of people Sebastian meets, they're in like a huge like union station that's full of windows and they seem to be safe. But then in other structures that have windows, they're exposed and they're and, and to the entity. Like there are no rules. At, at one point, they have to find antibiotics for this old man that got bit by one of the dogs that's become compromised, and they're in this apartment, and they're making sure to shut all the windows and the blinds because that will stop the entity, but that, it just, oh, it just doesn't make sense. Um, and then you have, like, a, a the cast is really wasted. Like, you have Diego Calva, who is just the lead in Babylon, Babylon, who has nothing to do, and they take pains to discuss why... This person who graduated from the University of Mexico is there. And then Georgina Campbell, who's this author that wrote some dumb book that was she was on tour on right when all of this happened. And then you have uh, Lola du Duaneus, who's actually a really great actor and also been used by Almodovar quite a few times, doing what? I don't know why we needed to show that there were people from different areas in Barcelona. Like, it just made it complicated and nonsensical because the lady from barbarian she's supposed to be british and speaks english and doesn't seem to understand spanish but then is speaking to all the spanish speakers in english they're responding in spanish she seems to understand then there's a little german girl who only speaks german mm -hmm. so but thankfully sebastian we our introduction well the flashback to him is he at his work he has to speak german to some manufacturer so he speaks phone. english german and spanish mm -hmm. so he's able to help translate that just seemed to overly complicate something that is so stupid but well it's like how could we put that much detail or effort into making a more interesting story the movie's not scary it's not creepy the way it's shot it's in that like super bright hd look. it has that look that i don't like then, towards the, I mean, I don't know what the tone's supposed to be, because then towards the, like, it never felt like an action-type movie, and then sort of the final sequence feels like now we're in, like, Die Hard. I don't know. It just feels like a cheap shot all around, like at the end where the Georgina Campbell and the little girl have to go up the metal stairs to get on the sky rail, whatchamit jig. The world, it would seem at this point, has only been kind of not working for eight months, and... This girl falls through metal, a metal stairway. Okay, so the gag of Sebastian being a seer is revealed very early because when he goes to that first safe house with the group of people he tricked, there is a gentleman there who has like had his eyes gouged out with really bad special effects makeup. And he explains that there are some people who are working for the entity to force people to see it. So then it's obvious, like, oh, so that's what Sebastian is. And then we see him, ste all of the people sleep on a bus. Mm -hmm. I don't understand this because they're inside of a building where they feel safe to not cover their eyes. But then at night they sleep inside of a bus that's full of windows, inside of the space full of windows. And that seems to be fine. And there's more than one bus that they could have. There are a lot of buses. So Sebastian steals the bus and, like drives it outside of the safe house building and crashes it and crashes it so all the people on board end up seeing the entity and killing themselves and then he moves on but i just just straight away i don't think this story makes any damn sense well it's not compelling it's not compelling the the 
the main conflict is so basic. Like, you can't see this thing that's in the air that sometimes can open doors. Mm -hmm. But then you're fine inside of a room with windows. But then if it has curtains... Like, I just don't understand. It seems pretty permeable. I, I don't... I, I, I guess I just don't understand. And I feel like uh, even if there is a safe space for... Even like the end of the first one where there's this encampment run by run by blind people. Do I want... This is my personality. Be like, do I want to live? Do I want to live? I don't know. Well, also, the, how is the entity not going to make it there? Right. It's not like a movie like... Uh, What's the one with the Krasinski? Uh, a Quiet Place. Where the things can't be in water, so if they're on an island, they're pretty much safe. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, this entity seems like it can go wherever. It goes up to the sky. It climbs like a huge tower. Mm -hmm. So they're not safe wherever they are. The devil vision. Uh, oh my God. Speaking of how it looks, so then we get the vision. Like the, the, per the perspective of the, the entity. That looks so cheap. Then, whenever the souls leave people's bodies, that looks cheap. We're saying the entity more than they do in the latest Mission Impossible film. Oh, that's right. <laughs> oh, that review hasn't come out. No, but... Um, okay, another device used is, because we learned so early on that Sebastian is like a shepherd for the devil, then we keep flashing back to when the incident first happened. Nine months back, eight months back, seven months back. And it explains how he gave a birthday celebration for his 11 year old daughter on his daughter's birthday she was killed by the entity because of the priest uh -huh. so let's get to the priest because i don't understand this priest is running like some sort of cult where they have like they're branded with like an eyeball and they're like devotees to the entity it's like the eye of horus but yeah yeah but it's so watered down yep this movie feels like it could have been like a 10 minute part of an anthology mm -hmm. that's how weak and flimsy the story is. and the characters yeah. and it has the nerve to be an hour 50 minutes long yeah oh yes uh and, and again getting back to the something in the dna and how trauma changes your dna it's almost like it's trying to craft something in response to like the recent pandemic we've all been through like we can find a vaccine it's like uh there's one scene I thought was kind of cool, but then it's hobbled by the like non like the illogical story because they're all in like a like when the incident is first happening in the city and people haven't been haven't killed themselves yet. People are in like the subway station underground, mm -hmm. so they're inside, and then the entity gets them inside, mm -hmm. and then all the people jump in front of a moving train. Of course. So it's like that was kind of creepy, kind of. It was a shot the best. About as creepy as M. Night Shyamalan's The Happening was. But, right. But then it's like, what are the rules? This thing is getting into some places. And not others. Oh, I, I hated it so it, much. It was just tedious. Every, oh, God. And every time he sees his dead little girl. and she, I hated that daughter. Whatever. <laughs> save them. Because in, in his mind, he's, think, he's thinking that he's leading these survivors to salvation. Like, this thing is of Christ. And once he accomplishes that, he'll be reunited with, with his, his daughter. daughter. But every time she shows up and she's got a blank expression on her dumb little face and she's saying, save them, Papa, save them. Oh, I hate it. Oh, that. my. It's, it's like nails on chalkboard. It's so, it's so bad. You know what I was thinking? Those new Apple, like those, those Oculus glasses probably would be helpful in this situation. Mm, yeah. Like... Do you, like, can you cover your own eyes and then just see, like, a digital representation of the outside world? Something more interesting needed to happen in this version. I just need a VR headset, I guess, and just need to wander around forever in it. Cause that poor lady, the British lady, I feel like her acting was wasted. She would... It, it's funny, her, Diego Calva and Georgina Campbell were in two major films last year. And it's like, that well, you really liked. Th yeah, th that... And this is what we ended up with. I don't know. So part of her group is uh, the, the the two you just mentioned, Sebastian, little German girl. And there's like an older couple. And at one point they get outside and the older man, he like kind of gets hit. So like he hurts his leg and they just give up. They do. And that's the woman is Lola Duenas. She's not that old. But, I, but, but but again, they seem afraid of the entity like it's going to snatch them up, even though their eyes are covered. So again, I don't understand. Like These people have been living for months and months successfully avoiding seeing the entity and going outside and doing stuff. Mm -hmm. So why at that moment were they like, well, they finally got us. So then the husband says, well, I want to see you one last time. And then they take off their blindfolds and get infected. 
that just seemed really like a really corny way to have some like drama and yes it didn't make sense to me i i agree mm -hmm. and That's i also a... I, 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 yeah it's just it was a, it was a tiresome film i, I don't know what the only other thing to comment on is the ending so in order to get to the castle like you mentioned there's this sky tram sky rail situation so they get up there in a really clumsy way and then the entity is able to open a door, go up the thing, get, get up there. So the British lady has to count, because, you know, it's like when you go skiing, mm -hmm. she has to sort of count when she can jump onto this thing because the platform has been destroyed. Onto the chalet. And of course, she's blindfolded. I thought that was so laughably bad. It's laughably bad. But that's what I was, the thought that flitted out of my head was that these people seem real comfortable walking around like they're blind. Oh, yes. In this rubble and... This, this city brought to rubble. <laughs> like, yeah, like in this unfamiliar space, they're just so comfortable walking without vision. It, it just seems so unrealistic. Lastly, when the scientists are taking blood and they're saying that they're checking for like abnormalities and the DNA of people who can see, then they tell us that they've captured the entity. A, a seer. No, oh. they have a seer whose blood they're using to like inoculate yeah, yeah. people. But... They're putting them in like this, like safe with the entity. So how did they capture? I don't know. That wasn't. That made no sense. It didn't. It didn't. I hope they're not going to do like, because in the film they say, oh, it's moved from the U.S. to Europe and Serbia. So then it's like, is the next movie going to be like Bird Box, Johannesburg or? <laughs> I, I don't need any more of these. No, I don't either. What it, would you give this movie? The one... I'm giving it one out of five and not 0.5 because I do think they're like the acting is fine. Mm -hmm. It's just a really shitty story. <laughs> it could be called Bird Box, the Unseer. Are you referring to the Unseen? Yeah. <laughs> Hit the thanks button. Listen to our podcast. Bye. <laughs>